I'd like to welcome you all to a session on Host Your Own Classroom Professional Development, a behind-the-scenes look at Classroom 2.0 Live. I'm very excited to be facilitating this session. My name is Karen Horn, and I would like to welcome our three presenters, Kim and Lorna and Peggy. And before I turn it over to them, I'm going to give you just a couple of brief uh, instructions. so that you know how to use the tools that are available to you in this session. Uh, there is a chat window below your participants window, and many of you have already been <laughs> using that. If you've been to other sessions, then you know about these, uh, these tools. But I'm just going to give you a quick review. We have the check and the red X for polling questions if the presenters uh, choose to ask you to participate in that way. And we have the emoticons, the applause, and the smiley face. Uh, the blue hand with the green arrow uh, indicates that you can raise your hand if we need to take turns at doing something. And then there are also some uh, whiteboard tools. The whiteboard area is on the right of your screen. Uh, and again, this will be up to the participants. And they will probably instruct you as to which tools you will be able to utilize. Um, at this time, I think there was something else I was going to tell you. And now I don't recall what that is. Anyway, um, I am going to I'm going to release my microphone and uh, welcome our guest presenters today. And take it away, please. It looks like Kim is ready to talk, so I will release the mic. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I'm Kim Kay. And I'm here with Peggy George and Lorna Costantini. And we are the co-hosts of the Classroom 2.0 live show that is held in Illuminate each Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern. And we meet each week and we talk about technology tools and ways to engage students using those technology tools. And we have our sessions in Illuminate, like I said. And the first thing I want to do is kind of get everybody engaged. And um, we're going to use the laser pointer tool, which is the blue wand with the red starburst at the end. And if you can indicate your location on this US map, and by clicking on the laser pointer, and then click on your location in Texas or the United States, wherever you're from, and let us know where you're located right now. We would greatly appreciate it. We kind of like to uh, see where everybody's from. And I'm seeing some great places throughout the United States up in Canada, and we're so glad that you joined us today. And we're going to go ahead and move on to some polling questions. And we'll be using the green check and the red X, which is right next to the blue door, right below the participant window, as well as some of the ABCD um, options, which is also right next to the blue door. And the first polling question we'd like you to answer is, what do you hope to learn about creating a virtual webinar? And this one won't be answered using the polling options. We're going to type on this whiteboard. So you will click on the A. Let me get my little thing over here. The first, the A that's over here, the single A, and then type out so what you would like to learn or what you would like to know about. Um, if you haven't heard of our show or participated in our show, um, you're welcome to put that you'd just like to know more about our show as well. So um, if you want to click on the, either of those text tools, the A or the one with the little paragraph, and give us some information and feedback about what you would like to learn about creating webinars, um, or if you just want to know about how to go about creating the webinar in general. We're simulating a format that we use each Saturday. Um, 
So you can kind of take this and take our ideas and use them and adapt them to fit with what you're thinking and what your needs are and the, the way that you're going to be presenting your webinar. And we're going to be at the end giving you some ideas and some ways and, and platforms that you can consider using. So we have a lot in store for you. And I'm seeing some great ideas that you'd like to learn about, uh, interactivity, um, tips and tricks, and some of the free. Um, and we're going to be talking just a teeny bit. We're not going to get into a lot of the different tools. Um, but I'll give you some resources. And uh, we won't be getting into like the breakout sessions, but Illuminate does offer that. That is something. And Illuminate has some really great, great training that you can attend. Um, and you can attend their sessions, whether you use their platform or not, to get more ideas on how they do those sessions. So that's something you might want to keep in mind, too. So let's go ahead and move on to the next polling question. And thinking of these types of webinars, which of the platforms have you used to participate in a webinar? Um, if you've not ever participated in one before online, then you can click the letter E for other. But pick one um, that you've used the most if you've participated in several different types of webinars. <clears throat> I know I've participated in in each of those, but usually Illuminate is the, the one that I'm in the most. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get those results. Um, looks like about everybody has uh, voted. And about 50% have um, used Illuminate. And let me move this up just a bit. And uh, Eight percent of the group in here have used WebEx before. Not too many have used Adobe Connect. Um, C, Dim Dim. Uh, not too many people have used that either. And E, other or not, um, not a um, session at all. So those are some interesting uh, percentages. And we're glad that you've used Illuminate, but that, of course, is not the only platform. But that is the one that we're going to be speaking mostly about today. But again, our ideas are going to be applicable to any platform that you use. Um, you can modify and use them however to fit your needs. Great that you presented in Dim Dim and Illuminate. Great, Charlene. And it's welcome to see everybody and see you, Charlene, uh, one of my clerk buddies. Okay. And on polling question number three, have you ever hosted your own webinar or session before? If you have hosted a session before, um, click on the green check. And we're going to go back and change the polling options, if you give me just one second. OK, go ahead and click on the green check. And if you have not ever hosted your own webinar before, click on the red X. If you have, the green check. And if you have not, click the red X. And I'll go ahead and get those results now. And it looks like about 25% in the group have not uh, hosted their own webinar. And about 58% in the group have. And that's great. And if you have already, you can use some of these ideas. Um, add to your repertoire, share some of the ideas that you have as well with us, because we're always looking for ways to improve our sessions as well. And so now we're going to move on to the newbie question on what is Classroom 2.0 Live? Classroom 2.0 Live um, started out with Steve Hargadon, and it has evolved into or merged into our Saturday sessions. And this is the website that we use to promote and to advertise what our sessions um, are, what's coming up, and our resources and so forth that we have to offer each week. And the information that are in our show, um, we can we post on this website for you to use each and every week. And I have a, 
a link that's going to have all of the resources that we have shared, and I'll share that link with everybody in just a bit. Um, but I have all of the links compiled into what we call a GLAM link, and I'll explain more about that in a bit. And this is our website for the Classroom 2.0 live site. And we talk about the different technology tools and ways to engage your students in the classroom with different technology tools. And the students can be either your teachers or the students can be um, regular pre-K up to higher ed students, students in general, um, students of all ages. So this is the home page. And we have a welcome screencast on how, kind of how you use the site and the resources that we have. Um, this coming Saturday, it tells you uh, the date of the upcoming show, the topic, who the special guest is. Uh, Lorna is fantastic at creating our um, little icon and image representing the topic for the following week. We show our time zones and the time zone uh, converter for those who um, are in different time zones, as well as the link to the Illuminate Room. And we have a tiny URL to make it convenient for everybody. We've also expanded and um, have a Classroom 2.0 Live Beginner Series and with Sue Waters. And uh, she's ill today, so the session is going to be um, has to be postponed. But she does a great session on um, presenting technology topics and tools uh, so at a very beginner series level, and so that's very, um, very informal and comfortable for our participants. So it's just kind of a different perspective because we try and in each of our sessions um, include information from a beginner level as well as um, ideas and topics for those who are more experienced, and those who are more experienced can share their their um, experiences in our uh, show so that they can um, help some of the beginners come along as well. And we have a host page which has information about each of the three of us. And I call us the glamorous show hosts and you'll see why. And then we have our Using Illuminate tab where we have resources about how to use Illuminate that you can use prior to the sessions. This is our calendar that we have. And uh, we have Classroom 2.0. Um, we have the Future of Education. We have edtechtalk.com, if you're familiar with their um, webinars, Open PD webinars, and EduBlogs, which is um, part of Sue Waters. Um, she does series other than the beginner series. And we feed all of those into a Google Calendar that you can subscribe to. And Steve Hardinon is the founder of Classroom2.0.com and the name that started all of this. And he also does different interview series with some of the different names that he has um, started or has a hand in creating. So all of those calendars uh, feed into, oops, I forgot to check tour guide. So let me do it. OK. Let me go back. Okay, here's our host page. Here's our using Illuminate page. <laughs> here's our calendar page, where all of the calendars are fed into. And we also recommend that, in addition to having a calendar page, that you also have a way for your guests to contact you and give you feedback. And this is our um, contact page so that um, your guests or whatever can let you know something's not working with your website or give you feedback on topics. Um, we have a survey that we like to solicit feedback on, but some way that your guests can give you information and um, can communicate with you. And then our archives and resources page is where we post all of the resources that are in our GLAM links. And as soon as this loads, I'll show you. We also post the link to our full recording from Illuminate and the tiny URL for that recording. Um, we also take the chat log from each session and put those um, on a wiki page and then link to that wiki page. We have an audio MP3 file where if you um, want to just access it online, you can. 
and that little play button underneath it, you can play the audio recording directly from this web page. You can also uh, play the audio, the video on this web page, or you can access the link um, from this web page. Um, we also post the newbie question of the week, and each week we have a newbie question similar to this one that we had in this session. We post the topic and our special guest, and then below that we have what is our GLAM link, where it's like share tabs, where we compile all of these links here into one link, so that when you click on this link, it takes you to um, all of the different resources and thumbnails. And I'll show you that in a little bit later on um, for all of the links and compiles them together for you. We have our different categories. So if you're looking for a particular category or guest name, you can look through here. And we also have a custom search engine that Peggy created and put on this page here. So if you're looking for a topic that's um, or some idea or concept that or tool, that is just on our page in our archives, you can use that uh, Google's custom search box to access that information. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it over back to Peggy, or to Peggy, and um, these are, oops, I don't know what happened. Let me get that first slide. There we go. Thank you, Peggy. And we we are the co-hosts, Kim, Lauren, and Peggy. That's our uh, website. And now, Peggy, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to you. Thanks, Kim. That was a great overview of the site so that people have some context for what we're going to talk about now. Because the website, which is hosted on Weebly, is um, where we organize all of our things for the participants in our shows. And this is a, a little small for you to see. And there will be a number of slides here where the text is not really necessarily designed for you to be able to read all of it, but just to give you a a big picture idea of some of the tools that we use. And I created, uh, we all worked on this MindMeister map just to give an idea of all the different pieces that go into organizing our show. And you'll recognize Steve Hargadon up in the photo there. And he is our founder and our mentor. And our shows actually began with something that Steve started a couple of years ago, a few years ago. And it was on a wiki, and he did it every Saturday morning, but it was generally um, just a conversation time for people to meet. And I mentioned to him at one point that I would love to see him restart that and to give us a little bit of a focus so that we could plan ahead and be prepared to talk about the topic. And so that is how our show began. And he said, why don't you do that? <laughs> and you know how that goes when you make a suggestion. People are very eager to have you pick up the ball and run with it. So I said, well, I would love to do that, but I would like to have some co-hosts. And he said, the show is yours. Do whatever you want. So I quickly went to my favorite PLN people and invited Kim and Lorna to join me, and we've been a team ever since. As of this coming December, our show will have been on for a year. Now, just to quickly go over all those things, uh, you can see we use Skype chats, we use Google Docs, we use Google presentations, we created professional development certificates, we do use Illuminate for our shows, we use our website for our archives, and we use GLAM links for all of our follow-up resources so people can find them all in one location. And one of the reasons we really enjoy GLAM is because it allows us to do a um, screenshot of the actual web page, but it also allows us to add a short description. 
and then we use um, the name, we use email announcements, and we use our website for show announcements, and we use feedback surveys. So I'm going to now go into a little more detail about some of these things and drill down a little bit for you. These are some of the pages that you may not be able to read all that well. This is a sample agenda slide, and we prepare a full script and agenda for ourselves for every show. And we share this with our special guests so that they know exactly what's planned and what the time is set aside for each of the sessions, where the links are for the presentation, where in this particular one we were using share tabs, but our current ones we're using Glam for. And we have our we always have a newbie question of the week and we always have a topic. And that is the new format that we went to when we took over the show. We felt that it would be helpful to people to have a topic so that if it was something they were really interested in, they could choose to join us for that. And we also really wanted to have something in every session where people new to Web 2.0 could get a little background to understand some of the other things. But we didn't want the show to be entirely focused on what we call newbies because there is so much to learn from the experts that are out there and already using these tools. So we wanted to be sure to have content that would be appealing to those more advanced users so that they would come to the session and then share their tips in that. So that's um, what our Google Planning Doc looks like, at least the top of it. Uh, let me see. Um, we always use Google presentations to organize our slides. We have our introduction and exit slides that we set up each week. And then when our guests have slides, we add them to this presentation so that they're all in one place to upload to Illuminate. This is a really tiny one, but this is just an example of a Google Doc. We created an email template, and we've tried to sort of standardize all of these pieces so we don't have to start over each time. And this email template is used to send out email notifications to everyone in Classroom 2.0 and to post on the Classroom 2.0 name so that people will know what the upcoming event is. And um, we forward that to Steve, and he gets it posted for us. We also um, have this page set up for our planning, and this is where we put our weekly announcements. Again, that's something that we send to Steve to get posted on the sites and to send out to the mailing list. We also created a Google Doc for our show schedule, because after you've done it a while, you forget whether you've had someone and exactly when that was and where to find it. So we use this page just for ourselves to keep track of what we did on each of these dates, and we can go back and track it if we need to. When we first began, we were using a wiki, and we were inviting people to suggest show topics on that wiki, and we found it was really hard to manage that. So we went to this Google Doc just for ourselves, and um, we now get our feedback through the surveys. Um, <coughs> we asked Illuminate to create a special survey just for our show so that we could add some extra pieces. They always have questions about how the Illuminate session worked for the participants, but we wanted to know um, were their expectations met, were there topics that they would like to see covered in future events, and there are additional questions on that page that aren't in this screenshot. But that's where we get our suggestions for the future show topics. Again, this is really small, and I'm sure that you can't read this, but we keep a page in Google Docs of all of the feedback we receive from those surveys and then post them here. So when we're trying to think about a, a future guest or a future topic, we come to this page and use that to guide our thinking. We also recently um, decided to start offering professional development certificates for people. There was a lot of interest in this because there are many states that require certificates and hours for recertification. And so 
participants need to check with their districts to see if they will accept these, but we offer the certificate and they can get an hour of credit for any session they come to, whether it's a recorded session or a live session, and we're really excited about that option. And now I'm going to turn it over to Lorna to drill down on a few more things for you. Thank you, Peggy. be here to talk about what we call the show logistics. You know, we've done all the wonderful planning on paper and we need to make it happen now. So the, one of the things that we do talk about and how we manage to get together is that we use the Skype, there we go. We use the Skype conference a lot. In fact, it's great because it's asynchronous and synchronous so that when I go to bed at uh, 2 in the morning, sometimes Eastern Standard Time, someone in the other end of the world can pick up and the conversations can start off in the morning. So we use that heavily to uh, take all the information out of the planning documents and actually make them happen. And we sometimes use the Skype conference as a back channel. Um, if we're having troubles with Illuminate, we can still be telling each other in the Skype conference, uh, you know, something's happening here and gives us a heads up um, when there's an issue. But um, one of the biggest things that I'd like to talk about is um, how we get people there. And we use a variety of tools. Uh, you saw the um, uh, email that goes out to uh, InCraft and Tuesday Are Live, but the, the show is always um, I, um, marked or, or uh, shouted out on the Class and Tuesday uh, website so that people have access to the information there. But we use a couple of other tools that I'm sure some of you are already familiar with, and that's Twitter and Plurk because we find a lot of our uh, participants are already in our uh, personal learning network, and so that they um, get notifications, you know, um, an hour before the show. We often do it right at the show or uh, in a few minutes into the show because then everyone who knows uh, that it's happening also sends out their Twitter announcements to their networks and it does work really, really well to get people uh, interacting. And I, I saw a question about how do we get interaction too and I think that has a lot to do with the guests that we do bring on to the show because they bring their own uh, networks to them. They also bring their own expertise. And uh, that just sort of uh, mushrooms, and as well as with the fact that people know that their input in the chat room is actually being heard by other people and they tend to bounce off each other. So our interaction is really based on a lot of different things to get the participation. Let's talk about the show logistics. And like all good scouts, you need, scouts, you need to be prepared and expect the unexpected. You absolutely never know what's going to happen and we sort of try to drill this uh, in to our guests, but because of time they're not able to actually um, mirror what we do in practicing ahead of time so that you might find people coming on and expecting to do a presentation with a set of uh, uh, a video and they really want it to play and find out that they can't. So you have to learn to go with the flow and Kim is terrific in having um, the skills to respond to people when they are trying to use a uh, uh, format that doesn't actually work the way they want in, in the session. Penny also talked about uh, the Google presentations with the, the slides a few minutes ago. Someone asked the question, so how do you get from the Google Doc into uh, your session? And so uh, you can download the presentation as a PowerPoint. And most um, webinar software platforms will accept the PowerPoint uh, um, format and you can upload the, the content in that way. Just thinking here for a second. Um, and because this unexpected happens, it's really a good idea to know where your support systems are. Do you have a telephone number to access the support system? Uh, and it's different for every webinar platform. Illuminate has a, a really good uh, setup that we can call and it's uh, available to people. I, I know that the Adobe world has their, another process and each particular one has the ability to support but you should know what it is so that when you get into trouble because you really do become a technical support to a lot of people and um, there's going to be times that you can't help them because um, they may have a different operating system, the software applications they have on their computer. I know that uh, we did have issues with uh, different uh, Mac uh, operating systems and 
if you're on a Mac, you really need to pay attention when they do the automatic uh, software updates because sometimes the plugin for Illumina, especially is a Java upload, upload, and we had some real difficulties trying to get to, I think Peggy at one time couldn't get in, or Snow Leopard came on and they made sure that we didn't upload it because it wasn't compatible with the newest format of Illumina. And I, I know right now that Adobe's upgraded and so that they have a new plugin, so you need to pay attention. So you, can you hear it already? That there's all kinds of little little um, intricacies that can happen and they don't always mesh into what you'd like to happen. So being prepared and practicing and trying it all out really, really works well because here Peggy and I, you know, we're really, really on top of things with Peggy is. And today I hadn't registered in the Moodle for the conference, so we had to work through Okay, how do I get you into an integrated Moodle uh, install so that we can see Illuminate? So the, just because you think it's going to work well for yourself, your participant has so many different variables that, and they're not always on the same wavelength that you are. So you need to again expect the unexpected and have um, ready at your uh, fingertips solutions for people because um, we all come with different skill sets. So not everyone knows what to do in a session, and we've already seen today how. Both Kim and Karen went through how to use the Illuminate session, and we do that on a regular basis at our shows just to help those people who are new. And you know what? Every time there's someone new, and some of our participants get to know that they'll tune in a few minutes later because we're actually trying to accommodate everyone's needs in a classroom, and we all know that is really, really difficult to do. Um, I want to go into setting up the show as far as hardware is concerned. And one of the preferred things, I should actually be moving on, I think, no, I'm sorry, I'm on that slide. Um, preferred hardware. Now, we have found that um, a USB headset is the preferred method to prevent echo, because if you're using a uh, desktop microphone or you're using the speakers in your laptop, it will start picking up the um, sound from your speakers and that just sends a, a loop into it so you have an echo. If that does happen when you're presenting and you have one of your guests doing that, it's best to shut yourself off so there's only one microphone at the same time and that really helps uh, negate that. There is a bit of a discussion about, well, should we allow everyone to have access to the microphone? You know, again, that has to be something you have to um, gauge yourself. Today we're in a small group, but we often have 100 participants and so we don't normally give everyone access to the microphone. And that's because someone can inadvertently turn on their microphone and break into the discussion so that when we get to question and answer period, we uh, ask people to raise their hands and then we do get the microphone. And, and that in itself is another um, discussion point because you need to weigh out what you're timing in your show because it could be close to the end and you know that you have a participant come in and doesn't know how to use the microphone, it can take a little bit of time to get them trained to do that. So depending on your show, you will make a value judgment about whether you do or do not give them access to uh, the uh, microphone. And I think I talked about the incompatibility and, and conflicts. Uh, but one thing you might not know or be aware of is that you have to watch some of the uh, webinar uh, software applications might conflict with a browser. At one point, I could only use Illuminate on the Mac in Firefox. Now I can use it in Safari, so that's something you need to um, be aware of. Now the other part that most people want to know is what do you do with multimedia? And they're all looking at the opportunities to um, show videos, right? To bring in slideshows, to play recordings, and, and we have found that this is something you really need to practice because each um, uh, whether it's Adobe Connect or whether it's Illuminate, they all have their upload limitations, whether it's images, the number of slides, whether you're uploading a video. You need to check what the system will allow. And it will eliminate the 100 MB for a video, so if you have something larger than that, um, that you're going to have issues with that video. And similarly, um, you're thinking that you're going to upload the video in one platform and hear the sound when in fact you are not going to have that happen. So at that point, you will be considering um, using desktop sharing or actually thinking about not using a video with sound to do your presentation. There are what we find more successful to use WebTour and Illuminate 
to allow us to um, present in that way. Uh, so it, I guess it's just a case of making sure that you're 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 practicing, you're trialing out what you want to expect, and, and really again it's the same thing as finding out what's important to work with your guests. And some people are able to use de desktop sharing um, quite well, but um, it does take a large amount of bandwidth, and so that does uh, create problems for it. And the other thing is we talked about using video for ourselves. We refrain from actually using the, the video simply because of that, re that reason. You can uh, bring in the video cameras as your presenter, but we find it's better to show our, our beautiful faces uh, in a slide to let people know what you look like and then back off on using the actual video camera. And then, then there will be restrictions from different platforms as far as the PowerPoint slides. Um, people who are on a Mac want to be using a keynote. Well, we can't. They won't accept that format, so you have to um, save in a PDF uh, format in order for it to work. So I think that's a quick overview of the setting up and the logistics. That we can answer any questions at the end if someone has something specific they want to know. Um, when you're first starting out, I'll say it again: um, expect the unexpected, go with the flow, and uh, practice, practice, practice. So at this point, I am going to turn it back over to Kim to finish the presentation. Great. Thank you very much, Lorna. Um, and I wanted to mention that we also, on our web page, we have things set up where you can subscribe to the RSS feed and subscribe in iTunes. We're working on um, setting up an i channel, an iTunes U channel. Um, that's in the works at the moment. But right now, they, the um, podcast, the MP3 and the MP4, are sent into iTunes each week. So that's something that is really uh, helpful for those who want to listen to them, the video or the uh, MP3 or MP4 on their iPods or MP3 player, whatever. Thing that they have to use. And uh, we kind of tried to set up a best practices for ourselves, uh, similar to what we've kind of presented today. Uh, we do the intro that uh, people have mentioned. Okay. Um, we do the uh, an introduction of how to use the features in Illuminate. Because like uh, Lorna mentioned, we do have new people each week um, that are not familiar with using the tools. So uh, we're working on trying to set up like we have pre-show music where you can play the music player prior to the session while you're waiting for things to start. And we're working on getting a screencast created where people could play that screencast or the music. And if they're new, uh, we would really strongly recommend they play that Illuminate or that recording on how to access the different features in Illuminate. But that still um, won't take care of everybody, but that will help eliminate a lot of the need of the new people that come to each show. And we set up a page, a hidden page in our website that we access the music player and just post that and have that available so that people can play that um, prior to the start of each session. and. Not only does that, you know, kind of maybe generate some communication and discussion, but mainly it gives people um, an opportunity to make sure that their speakers are set and that they can hear the audio. If they want to make sure their microphone is set and so forth, they can go up to tools and then audio and use the audio setup wizard. But at least with the uh, music player, they can make sure that they're able to hear the audio prior to the start of the session. Uh, and so that's something that's real important. And we archive each and every show, and we post the chat log, like I said, and the MP3 and the MP4, so that all of those are accessible each and every week. Um, Illuminate offers a three for free room they called their V room, and that's how we started. We would just go in there and practice and work on different things and ideas that we would come up with. We would get together and go in there and try those different ideas and practice those things and um, get those things set. And at the end of each session, Illuminate, when you're in the full session, generates a link. And we use 
publish to to uh, compress and to separate out the MP3 and the MP4s. To separate out the MP3 using their publish um, product, it takes seconds. To create the the MP4, it takes a couple hours, and you just let it run in the background and so forth. Um, but then you can post that and have people subscribe to that. And that's why we went to the blog post on our archives page so that people can subscribe to that. Because before we were just posting it. But uh, then we came up with putting those items and being able to subscribe to them in the RSS feed in iTunes. So we're gradually we're growing and learning each and every time, each and every week. And Publish is not part of their free room. Um, and the three room, the three for free is free, and you can access that and get a room for free from Illuminate. But also, uh, what I wanted to to emphasize is that through a partnership with Learn Central, which is um, an affiliate community partner of Illuminate. You can get access to a free Illuminate room anytime that you would like, just similar to this room, as long as that it is free to your participants and you're able to record it. And it is a public session. It's not like um, something that you would need to keep private and that you wouldn't be able to share with just anybody. Then you would be able to access that and have access to a complete room, Illuminate room, for free through Learn Central. And I'm uh, bringing up the Learn Central site. And you can um, join at that site. It's free to join. There's no cost. Uh, you can join the site. And then there's a group called Host Your Own Webinars Group. And that is in the GLAM link. And you can join this group. And then you have access. You can schedule. And you'll contact Steve and in the group, the excuse me, host your own webinars group. You can just contact Steve, and it tells you all the directions on how to do everything and set everything up. And he will get, tell you and set up the room, he send you the link, and so forth. And then you can have access to this full Illuminate room, recording capabilities, and everything to host as many people as you'd like um, for an hour at a time. And you can do that as often as you would like. And you can submit your events and create an event in Learn Central. And those events are compiled each week and an email and sent out to all of the 24,000 plus members of Learn Central. They're also sent out to the um, 33,000 plus members of classroom2.0.com. And you can send the link, to learn central. you know, the guest well, link to join and publicize it through Facebook or Twitter or whatever networks and means you have access to and that you'd like to share and invite people to. So um, there is it provides a, a great compelling opportunity place for the education for not only to have access to the free room, but also to help publicize and advertise your sessions to generate you know, participants and so forth, and interest in your sessions. And then you can post the recordings back in Learn Central so that anybody who missed it, they can go to that event and watch your recording um, so that you can kind of continue that follow-up. You can create a group in Learn Central so that you can continue discussions after your sessions as well. And again, all of this is totally free through Learn Central and their partnership with Illuminate. Um, and of course, this isn't the only uh, source that you have to use and create your webinar sessions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post. I've created a wiki that's dedicated to video conferencing, web conferencing tools. And this page is also in the GLAM links. And I'll post that link in here in just a sec again. But if you scroll down this page using the slider on the very right, you'll see all of the different tools. Um, that are available. I've used all of the top ones, 
and then there are tons more, and new ones start all of the time. And every time that there's a new one, I go in and I add it to this list. Um, so it's a pretty comprehensive list of all of the different web conferencing um, meeting tools that you can use and websites that. And it indicates is it, if it's free or if is there a cost. And if there's a cost, it has the dollar signs, um, so that you can um, access this any time that you need to. And you can keep up with it and subscribe to this page. And any time that there's a change, you can do that. Um, the ones at the top are the most frequent ones that most people have used and use most frequently. But again, the, the ones at the bottom, and there are new ones that pop up all of the time. And <laughs> sorry about the illusion with all of those links. But um, anyway, uh, there are new set, uh, types of resources that come up all of the time. And trying to keep up with them and use all of them are just, it would be endless. But the ones at the top are the ones that I have used personally, and those are the ones that most people have used. But regardless of which platform you use, um, you know these are the things that we have used that have we have found that have worked the best. And the when you get the set up your session at Learn Central and it's sent out to like over fifty thousand people in an email. Um, it's just really, really helpful in generating people to, to join your session. And I, I, we just think that's really great. And it's such a fantastic generosity of Illuminate to offer this to educators. And this is limited to educators. Because of course, Illuminate does have to make money. They are a business um, corporations. But to educators, they provide this service and the opportunity to use in a full Illuminate room for free any time that you'd like when you go through Learn Central. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the GLAM link for us now. And if there are any questions that you would like to ask us, please feel free to do so. We are host, uh, offering the session again on Friday at the same time. So if you have colleagues that you would like to hear or join our session, um, please let them know. They're welcome to join us and contact us again at 1215 Central. Um, we again host our sessions in Illuminate every Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central Time. And that is in Illuminate. And it's, we've become really skilled at using Illuminate. Um, but we're not experts. And we do. Uh, value any ideas that you want to share with us because we're always looking again to improve our sessions. <laughs> yes, we sleep, but yes, uh, Peggy and I are up very late. Um, I'm not in the classroom anymore. I was in the classroom for 20 years, so uh, I'm working on my master's right now. So sleep is limited, and. Um, it is a challenge with our different time zones, with the mountain time zone and central and eastern and so forth. We did start out very small and very, very structured. And over time, we just found ways that worked. And we found our niche. My niche is the um, technical part. Peggy's is focusing on the chat. And Lorna's is the, the graphics and um, you know helping out with both sides, the troubleshooting side, um, asking questions, the interviewing side. Uh, she's kind of a good mesh in between. And we all just kind of fit together and work. And you know, we're a good team. And you know, if I were in the classroom, I may not be able to do this every week, so I may have to do it once a month. Um, Lorna also does another show on Monday evenings every other week uh, for edtechtalk.com. So she's very skilled at interviewing and facilitating those conversations. And Peggy, if you want to jump in and talk about those baby steps, um, that would be great.
I somehow knew that you were going to say that. <laughs> and that's the way we work on our show, too. We just kind of bail each other out as, as things go along. Um, this is a lot to take in in one session, but I hope that by having the recording and having some of the resources um, that will get you started, but to tell you the truth, we've just learned it as we've gone along, and every experience we learn something new in, and that's what's so great about these online webinars, because there are always people in the room who have some experience with it, and they share their tips, and we learn from that. And our PLNs, our personal learning um, communities, are just so valuable for us, and we can send out a message on Twitter or Plurk or contact our our EdTech Talk folks in the um, chats that we have set up and say, we're having trouble with this. Does anyone know how to do this? And um, we always get answers to that. So it really what Lorna said earlier is it, it takes lots of practice and going in and trying things out and definitely trial and error. And that's why I really love the three for free room. If you're using Illuminate, the three for free room lets you practice as long as you want. And you can try everything out in advance to see how's the screen going to look and is the video going to play? Are they going to be able to hear it? And it helps that you can bring someone else in with you so that you can say, well, what are you seeing? Are you seeing the same thing I am? So. I don't know if that completely answers your question, but it is definitely baby steps, one day at a time. And then you get a little more confident and you um, feel more brave to do other things. But we definitely use our um, um, areas of strength to help each other out. <laughs> Does anyone else have another question? Our time is getting close to the end. That is so true, Charlene. Mm -hmm. And I'm in Learn Central just about every single day. So if you join that and you would like to host a session and your own webinar and you go through the, the session, you set it up, just let me know. I'll be there and I can help handhold or I can help moderate and you can focus on the content part um, and you and your colleagues or however you want to structure it. And I can just be there to moderate it. You know, if you're interested, just let me know. Drop me a line there, and you know, I'll, any of us, Peggy, Lauren, and I, we're all there in Lauren Central, and we'll be happy to help you as well anytime. Um, and we do offer closed captioning um, features for hearing impaired guests on our show through Tammy Moore, who is from Arkansas. And she um, does a fantastic job. She did not want to be on our host page because she didn't feel that she was another fantastic addition to our team, even though she doesn't necessarily see her the extreme value that she refers to our shows each week for the hearing impaired guests. And we are so grateful for her. She does a fantastic job. And she is just phenomenal at using Illuminate. I mean, she is just. You know, I think as talented as she is, so she really is phenomenal. So that's one at Learn Central that you'll want to check out and get to know her as well. And we would just like to extend a very special thanks to Connie and everybody here at the virtual conference, as well as to Steve, our founder of Classroom 2.0 on Future of Education and Conversations, and to each of you who participated in our session, and especially to to eliminate and learn central providing this forum for us to meet for this conference as well as for our sessions each week. We're very grateful for that, for that opportunity and for the opportunity to get to meet you and interact with you. And we hope that um, we get to see you in Learn Central and that you'll join us in our shows each Saturday. And if you'd like to contact us, uh, you can. That's our email address and that's our website. 
And uh, Karen, I'm going to pass it back to you. Thank you so much, Kim and uh, Lorna and Peggy. This really has been phenomenal. Um, and I, I feel very fortunate I was able to sit back as a facilitator and really not do much of anything at all because you are all so well versed in, uh, in using Illuminate. Um, I have just one bit of housekeeping, uh, but I, I do want to repeat a very, very special thank you to our presenters and uh, to the participants as well. Uh, again, pass the word uh, that this session will be repeated on Friday because there are, the, the resources were just amazing. I'm going to uh, send out a CPE certificate. And this is for uh, people who will be watching this um, on a recording. Let me just grab that real quick. And I'm going to send that out. Uh, for those of you who are here present, your, um, oh, I'm looking for my file. Hang on one second. All right, there we go. OK, it should be coming pretty soon. Um, for those of you who are present, thank you, Angela. You got the file. <laughs> they know the drill. Uh, your attendance is being recorded live in the session, so the CPE certificate is just for those who will be watching the recording. Uh, I think that is out there. And then again, I want to uh, draw your attention to the whiteboard. Uh, this session has been recorded. If you want to come back and refresh any time, it's located in the same place where you joined the meeting, and you can view the recording there. There are discussions on the Coming to You uh, homepage, so you can talk about what you've seen and heard here at the conference with others. There is a place to drop ideas. Uh, there's a tote bag where you can collect things from the exhibit hall which uh, is where our vendors are, uh, are set up. And I have just sent you the CPE stamp. So I think with that, I am going to turn off the recording. And again, so much appreciate the presenters today. And thank you all for your attendance. Hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>